And because I'm a scientist, I'm going to make a prediction. I want to, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to look for the following predictions. From the special creation point of view, we're going to expect that the things that we're going to look at, the design, the, the aspects of our biology and our genetics, they should be functional, they should make sense, they should be useful, and they should be perfect, more or less. I'm not going to be hard on that. Uh, in, in contrast, from evolution, we wouldn't expect things to be perfect. We would expect to find old designs underneath new designs. Remnants and pieces of old designs underneath new designs. We would expect to find clumsy solutions to design problems, those physical barriers. If there's a, something that the organism has to get over, some kind of a stress or a, a function it has to accomplish, a clumsy solution is good enough. It only has to be good enough for evolution. And by good enough, I mean good enough to get the genes from one generation to the next. The fact that some people can twitch their ears. My, my son is one who can do this. They can either twitch their ears or they move their whole scalp. And the reason they can do that is they have muscles attached to their ears. And in fact, each of you have muscles attached to your, your ears, except some people have learned how to activate those muscles. The question is, why would God have given us muscles attached to our ears? I don't know. It's puzzling. It doesn't raise a problem for me, but it's just puzzling. But if I look at it now from the point of view of evolution, you've seen this in your dog and your cat. They have ears that they swivel around to catch sound. It serves a function in those animals. It's a very useful function, and I can understand that we might have descended from an ancestor that had those ears that they could swivel around, and then for some reason over the course of time, we just lost that ability. We lost the need. They're still there, but we just don't need them anymore. You can see on the right-hand side, there's some nerves on the, uh, from the human coming down from the head, and one in particular, I don't know if you can read it in the back, the recurrent laryngeal nerve comes down from the head, and its target is the voice box. So its target is right here. But as it goes towards the voice box, it passes. It goes all the way down into the chest, underneath the heart, loops under the order, and then comes back to its original target. And that's a ten, roughly 10-inch 10 diversion in the human, but in the giraffes, we can find the same nerve, and it goes 10 feet out of its way into the chest cavity and back up to its target. And the question is, why would God have given us that nerve that does that? There isn't a good reason, and again, it's not a moral problem. The big issue is not. It's just puzzling. But we can explain from an evolutionary point of view. We can trace those same nerves. We can go through the various animals and go backwards through the tree of life, the evolutionary tree of life, and find that same nerve. And we can trace it even as far back as an ancestor that we shared in common with fish. Because we can see these nerves in fish. We can, we can see those same nerves traveling from the head to their various targets, and they more or less go straight to the target. But presumably over time, over millions of years, as that ancestor that we shared as it began to morph, as the body plan began to change, and the head moved one way, and arms and legs, the, the fins turned into arms and legs, and just the whole body of rearrangements were occurring, that nerve that went straight, now I had to take a little bit of a detour, and then over time, a greater detour, and a greater detour, until finally today, we see the nerve going all the way 10 inches into our chest, and back up, or in the case of the giraffe, 10 feet. I again want to emphasize, I'm not here to undermine your faith, I'm here to raise some questions and prepare you for a dialogue that you're going to have, especially those of you who have kids going into university. They're going to be met, meeting these various ideas, and you need to have a response to that.